Hey guys, Richard here with CRG Games, and I've spent the last few hours going over that Jolene deck and shaving the $800 down to $287. I took out all the big stuff, you know, the crazy expensive stuff that you don't really need to make this, I'm hoping, still very playable and very competitive while being budget friendly. So we're going to go over the cards real quick. Uh, Green Sun Zenith, I put that in there for a tutor. Regrowth, this is in place of Salvage, and it's a little bit better, I think. It costs one extra mana, but you get to put a target card from your graveyard to your hand instead of on top of your library. Uh, everything else in here is the same. I did keep Life's Legacy. I had considered putting in Momentous Fall, but Momentous Fall costs four, whereas Life's Legacy only costs two it doesn't quite have the same effect um, because you don't gain any life but i still think it's uh, a good card and it keeps the average cmc low in the instance uh, i wanted a little bit of interaction so red elemental blast is in here this allows you to counter a target blue spell that's as it's being cast and it's on the stack it's a spell excuse me um, or destroy target blue permanent, and that is equally as important because if somebody's got a commander that has blue in it, like um, I think Prosper Tomebound is uh, uh, blue-red, uh, you want to get rid of stuff like that, right? Because if somebody's going to be able to like combo off real hard, Red Elemental Blast is a great way to get rid of their, their stuff. Uh, Veil of Summer, because it's just extremely powerful, allows you to draw a card, um, spells you control can be countered this turn, and you and your permanents uh, gain hexproof from blue and black. It's it, Veil of Summer is just an absolutely um, insane one drop. I took uh, Lightning Axe out and put Galvanic Blast in because chances are you're going to have three or more uh, artifacts, so you'll be able to deal four damage. The other three cards are the same. Um, I did put a Soul Ring in instead of having like Mox Opal and Jeweled Lotus. Uh, <laughs> so, not that Soul, a Soul Ring is a replacement for those, um, but to keep it in you know budget, that's what it's got to be. Uh, Bootlegger's Stash. Uh, this is pretty important because being able to um, create treasure tokens from each of your lands, so each of your lands would actually create two treasure tokens if you have... Um, Jolene out, which is fantastic. And then they would create three if you had Zorn. Manifold Key, this is kind of important because it allows you to untap a target artifact or you can potentially make Jolene unblockable. And if you've got Monster Manual out, you can put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield and then use Manifold Key to untap it and do it again potentially. And then the other four cards here are the same, Well of Knowledge, and Mind's Eye are both for card draw. Well of Knowledge actually makes the game go a little bit faster because opponents can use this ability as well, and that's okay. The idea is uh, that you'll have more mana than available than everybody else, so you'll get to use this more. And there's nothing really wrong with speeding up commander games. Um, I, you know, I'm sure everybody has been in a game that's just taking hours and hours and hours and you wish that something would happen. Well, well of knowledge is one of those things that helps that kind of thing happen. And people aren't usually quick to get rid of this kind of stuff because if they do, then they can't use that ability. Um, Wild Cantor. So I took out Birds of Paradise and replaced it with Wild Cantor. I think, honestly, this is better because you don't really need a mana of any color. Um, there's only two colors in Gruel, right? Green and red. Do you really need the other three? I don't think so. Plus, Wild Cantor is 31 cents, where Bop is 10 bucks, basically. Professional Facebreaker. Uh, this is an auto-include, but I don't have one or if I do I don't know where it's at um, so I'm gonna have to buy one of those to put in here rabbit battery this is in place of lightning greaves because lightning greaves is like six or seven bucks and rabbit battery is only uh, 30 cents it doesn't give you the shroud but it doubles as an equipment and it's a creature and I think that's I think that's important um, and then you can still move it around. Not for zero, but you can still move it around. 
Hellkite Tyrant. I don't know why I didn't have this in here before. I do have a copy of this. Um, if everybody's happy and they're gaining treasure tokens and all that stuff, and you've got tons of treasure tokens on the board, you know, maybe instead of using Vandal Blast, you put Hellkite Tyrant out there, equip Rabbit Battery on it, attack, gain control of all of the artifacts um, uh, that that player controls, and then if at the next upkeep you've got 20 or more, you just win the game. Uh, Hellkite Tyrant is very strong, and I'm going to put that in there. Again, I don't know why I didn't. I, I guess I forgot that that's what it abil its ability was. Imperial Recruiter is in here because a lot of the creatures in this deck do have power two or less, so you'll be able to pull those out and find the one that you know you need at that time. Uh, Genesis is still in here. I, I put Omnath Locus of Mana in here. I don't really know if this is one of the greater cards, um, but my thinking was that if you're going to sack um, artifacts, in this case treasure tokens uh, via another means, you can... No, I guess you can't really do that. Um, I was thinking you could sack them, use their mana, and then... Uh... Oh, no, yeah, you can. Sack... Um... The artifact, the uh, treasure token, and use its mana. Um, but you don't have to lose the mana because the mana will go in your mana pool and it won't empty. But some other um, uh, creatures in here have, have effects when you sack an artifact, they get countered. So th I think that actually does. Yeah, that actually does. I was thinking about it correctly, I think. That does work. Um, Tavern Scoundrel, I, this is kind of neat because if you pay one and tap him, you can sack another permanent and flip a coin. So if you, um, pay one and tap and, and sack a permanent, aka a treasure token, and then you win a coin flip, you create two or up to three or up to four if you have both Jolene and Zorn out. I think that's a pretty good, um, uh, a pretty good value there. Uh, Blood Aspirant, because when you sack one of those permanents, you put a 1-1 counter on it. So that also ties in. Uh, Ravenous Intruder, also have an outlet here to sack um, artifacts and put two, give them uh, plus 2, plus 2 until on a turn. Reckless Fire Weaver, this was um, actually uh, uh, someone in the comments had recommended this card. And I end up finding a copy. This is fantastic. Uh, like, if you had Alter the Brood out and Reckless Fire Weaver, man, you everybody's going to hate you, and they're going to counter, or they're going to target you. And then you're going to pull out Red Elemental Blast and say, uh-uh. And then Veil of Summer again <laughs> when they try to do it again. Um, and then maybe Snakeskin Veil when they try to do it again. I don't know. Uh, I, I tried to have some interaction in here to, to help you out. Uh, most everything else in here is the same. Old Nawbone still the same. You can't really get around having Old Nawbone and um, uh, Old Nawbone and Goldspan Dragon. You can't really get around having those in here. Um, Circle of Dream Druid, Fierce and Path, Impulsive Pilferer. Yeah, everything else in here is basically the same. I'd like to take out Stone Coil Serpent, but I don't exactly know what to replace it with. So if you have an idea, put it in the comments. Um, that way I can take a look and, and see about replacing it, or, or maybe it just it's a good card. I thought about walking Ballista, um, but we need to keep the 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 price of this deck under three hundred bucks. That's that's the goal. Keep it under three hundred bucks. And in the enchantments, I took out Custody Battle because it's basically just a troll card. Put in Kenrith's Transformation. Uh, this is a great card because it allows you to draw a card, and you can take care of other threats on the battlefield. Rancor, I should have had this in there from the beginning because the, the original problem that I had was Jolene would get really big, but she would bounce off a 0-1 plant token. Trample takes care of that. Cindervines, um, I think this could be a good early game play. Uh, when an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to that player. So you'll ping people for a damage when they cast a non-creature, and you have the ability to pay one, sack it, and destroy an artifact or enchantment. So this kind of goes in line with having some interaction with other stuff on the board. And then if you do that, it deals two damage to the permanence controller. So it's kind of got three, you know, three little effects there uh, for a two drop. And I, I think that's pretty decent. 
Uh, Descent into Avernus is still in there, of course. Uh, the other things are the same. And then lands. I took out the big crazy lands. I wish I could have kept Nykthos Shrine the Nyx in here because it's it's just super strong being able to add as many mana as it does. But it's kind of important to keep the vet, you know the price down. So I've got like Rootbound Crag in here, um, Cinder Glade, Opal Palace. I think this could still be good um, because uh, when you cast Jolene, um, she's going to get an additional plus one, plus one counter. Or if you cast her, you know, multiple times during the, the, the term of the game, she could get multiple, you know, plus one, plus one counters. So um, kind of a good card, you know. And then everything else is basically the same, except I did add Gruel Turf in here. I left Spire Garden in here uh, because it's really not that expensive. If you get the uh, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate version, six dollars and forty-five cents. Um, apparently, the foil is five seventy-five. I, I don't know why that is, um, but uh, yeah, everything else is basically the same. So the overall price here's all the stats: uh, average CMC two point six one. It's pretty darn low. Um, land ratio about one in three. I think that's usually a good ratio. And, um, you know, normally you might run like 40 lands or so, but this creates so many treasure tokens, you don't necessarily need that many lands. And that's why I've got, uh, I've got less. And honestly, once I get to play this, I, I kind of think that I might be able to take out an additional land and add another additional creature or something that, that you know, causes more pain for my opponents. Um, so you can buy this deck pretty easily. What you got to do is, uh, you know, get the text file here, and then you're going to open that text file. You're going to copy everything. You're going to hit Control A, Control C. That's copy. Then you're gonna go uh, gonna go onto TCG Player's website. You're gonna go to Magic, Mass Entry, and you're just gonna paste everything in this box. Then you're gonna hit Add to Cart, and you're gonna watch it hit 1,200 bucks. Yeah, 1290.27. So don't worry about that. The reason why is because for some freaking reason. Uh, Impulsive Pilfer is $999. Somebody has one single copy uh, via TCG Direct for $999. Remove that crap. There we go. Uh, now we're at $290. And that's six packages, um, 99 items. If you go to Optimize, I just did this a second ago. Or, well, not a second ago, but probably 10 minutes ago. Uh, turn this off. If you don't mind um, lower quality cards, just go to any condition and hit optimize. And this is probably going to take, you know, three to five minutes. So while it's doing that, I want to talk about two things real quick. One, I'm currently drinking uh, Goose Island's 312 Lemonade Shandy. I freaking love this beer. It's uh, low ABV, so you can drink... And I'm not advocating drinking a lot. You know, drinking in, inherently is bad. It is worse than water, obviously. Alcohol, your body doesn't need alcohol. But I'm an adult. I'm over 21, and I enjoy it. So for those of you who uh, share those um, those three things, or two things, or whatever, 312 Lemonade Shandy and Sweet Tea. Mix the two together. Shandy first, tea after, so it doesn't foam up. It is the best Arnold Palmer uh, that I've ever had. And I could literally drink a lot of it. Um, yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, 312 Lemonade Shandy. If you're of age, you're an adult, you're responsible, go try it out. Freaking love this stuff. All right, second thing. Um, I've been messing around with the mass price function on TCG Player because I was looking at the prices today on my, on my, pay, on my uh, store here. And I was noticing that a lot of the prices, like some of them were high and some of them were low. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? So I messed around with it for a while. And then I finally got the settings that that work correctly to get the prices where they are. So if you look at sealed, um, I've got all the prices in here at, around, or below TCG market. Like Modern Horizons 2, uh, Double Masters 2022. I think I've got two of these available right now. Yeah, three hundred nine ninety nine. And I think they're actually going for three twenty two. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that because I'm paying less in fees, 
that I'm passing that on to the consumer. So I, I need these deals to be, um, uh, you know, good for you guys and also uh, good for me. So I, I've tried to price everything with the mass price function to be at or below TCG uh, low price. So um, everything should be good in there. For sealed, I've got packs, boxes, etc. Singles. Um, I'm still working on getting a lot of uh, stuff sorted, so I've got um, probably still like 30,000, probably 40,000 uh, singles um, to sort. Probably about a third of that is actually uh, sorted now, and then the other two thirds is not sorted, and I've got to you know start listing. Um, but I've got a lot of stuff in here. Most of this stuff, uh, especially the higher end stuff, is not available in the marketplace. You will not find it because I don't have it available on there. Um, I believe all of these prices should be uh, right in line with whatever the lows are. So like Tefri's protection here, 2114. Um, if we look at TCG player here, we go to Tefri's protection. I have to keep checking because sometimes people just come in and it only updates once a day. So sometimes people just come in and, uh, um, you know, undercut you, but it'll fix it the next time it, it does it. So near mint, normal, looks like $19 with $3 shipping is the low, that is $22. I have it at uh, 2114, so that's about right. And then tomorrow, once it updates again, it'll be um, in line with, with whatever the prices are. So if you're looking for sealed, if you're looking for singles, this is the best way to support the channel. I would highly appreciate it if you guys um, would like to uh, support, just browse here. If you see something you like, awesome. I uh, I would love if you purchased it. If you don't, TCG Marketplace is right there for you. Um, and I, and I, I would not be I would not be sad or I would not be mad if I if I don't have it and you got to go somewhere else. Or you don't like my prices. I'm not sad. I'm not mad. All right. Card Optimizer it is done. Um, yeah, so you can either get it in three packages for 280 or 26 for 235. That's a tough choice. Um, I guess it's what your what's your time worth? Is your time worth the 45 bucks uh, difference? You know, to wait for potentially 26 envelopes or you know whatever to arrive. I'm going with the 280. I was gonna pay 290 before come out the 280. I'm okay with that. Uh, and usually when you do this, it's gonna prefer. Uh, better quality cards. You'll see most of them here near mint, light played. And then every once in a while, you'll see one that's like, you know, Glimmer Void, heavily played. Or you might get a moderately played Gruel Turf. But it's it's 21 cents and it's going to be in a sleeve. So if you want to purchase the deck, that's how you do it. You use the uh, mass entry function on TCG Player. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm going to be building this deck in real life because I tried it on MTGO and they don't have Jolene available. You literally cannot build this deck on MTGO. The commander is not available. And that was that happened when uh, WotC was integrating all the cards on MTGO. They said that there was like a time crunch or a, a resource crunch or something like that. Basically, all you need to know is you can't build this deck on there. And I was very disappointed because I wanted to try it out and let you know uh, how it did, and I can't do that. So, got to do it in person. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support the channel, of course, go on to uh, my page. Um, search for cards if you want to buy some products or whatever. I get them out pretty quick. And uh, orders over $35. Singles ships for free. So until next time, I will catch you guys later.